Let's get started. I would like to introduce Kaizen Zone, Jason Short. Thank you, William. Thank you everyone for joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit about phosphating and just give you a general overview of the process and kind of an introduction to how it works. So where do we start with phosphating? Well, I always like to start with rust because we are familiar with rust. We know how it will eat straight through a metal and completely corrode it, giving it a, a giant hole. But about oh, 1600 years ago, they built a iron pillar in India that for some reason didn't rust. And it took them a real long time to figure out why that was, but eventually we found out that the iron in that area had a uh, unusually high phosphorus content. And that phosphorus content, when they made this giant uh, iron pillar, created an iron phosphate coating around the, the surface of that pillar. And for 1600 years, it has remained intact. Now, unfortunately, today, we're not going to get 1600 years out of an iron phosphate coating for rust protection because we do remove the impurities and we have more advanced uh, metallurgy processes. But iron phosphate can still be a really useful coating to apply on to uh, our current day uh, grades of steel and iron. And why do we do that? Well, you still get good corrosion resistance. Uh, you get great wear resistance out of it for nuts, bolts, and screws. Uh, it can provide really good lub lubrication in some wire drawing applications, but most commonly it's used as a coating as a painting primer, especially in powder coat operations. Uh, and so we'll get into a little bit about why, how it works and why it's such a good primer and corrosion resistor. I know this is a bit of a chemistry slide, but bear with me. There are a couple of easy points to understand that are, are good for the overall process. The first thing is that this is a reaction that's going on. So we're using up two things. One, the chemical in your wash tank and two, iron. And where does that iron come from? It's important to understand the iron is actually coming from uh, the surface of your part. So you're acid etching off iron, putting it into solution, reacting it with the phosphate and redepositing iron phosphate onto the surface, right? So you're using iron from the part, it's a chemical reaction, and you're redepositing that onto the surface to form this iron phosphate later. So that iron phosphate layer that you're depositing uh, is actually porous, right? It's precipitating out onto the surface, and we've got a couple of SEM in images here. And so these crystals are actually forming on top of the iron phosphate layer on the left. Um, but if we zoom in to this little box, which is the iron phosphate layer, you can see this nice honeycomb pattern. And that's really important because when you put either a seal coat, uh, rust inhibitor, uh, or a powder coat paint onto an iron phosphated part, it's able to seep into these pores and grab onto it and kind of latch in much better than it would on a smooth machined metal surface or even a cast surface that's a little rough. This porosity helps with the painting adhesion uh, remarkably well. So now that we know why, how are we gonna do this, right? A typical iron phosphate process is gonna be about four or five stages. Uh, and you can do immersion or spray. Uh, immersion is a little bit better because, it, because it's a reaction, you have more access to the chemical when you actually submerge the part. So, but in these four stages, the first one is almost always a wash. And you wash the parts first because, again, we need to get to the iron on the surface. So we have to remove any contaminants, oil, greases, oxides, scale, uh, before we start that reaction so we can get that clean iron off the surface of the part. Uh, after you rinse off whatever detergent you're using, it usually goes into a phosphate stage, and that is where the reaction takes place and you're redepositing the iron phosphate onto the surface. Uh, lastly, because we're going into, or we're using an acid here, uh, we wanna rinse that acid off and provide a steel coat 
if you can either do a direct rinse and then a seal coat or go directly into seal coat. Seal coat is a fancy way of saying rust inhibitor, right? Because this isn't like the iron pillar, the iron uh, in, in India, we've got a porous coating that we put on. So we need to protect it from rust uh, long-term. Iron phosphate will give you a day or two uh, by itself, but not much more than that. Uh, the big trade-off here is if you do it in a shorter amount of time, I've seen this as, as little as two stages, your cycle times are gonna be longer because you can theoretically put it right into the phosphate tank, but now your phosphate is gonna be cleaning, etching, and phosphating all in one. And you're gonna use up your bath life and you're gonna need more time to do that. I've seen it as high as nine stages where you've got some activators and some other etching chemicals to get a pristine surface that will really cut down the time per stage, uh, which is great, but you're paying on that with a larger footprint. So depending on what your shop size is. Uh, I said immersion is a little bit better. Uh, it is a better, quicker process, but most people can't do that in line. Uh, so the vast majority of iron phosphate things we see in the field are these monorail uh, spray systems and they work really well. Uh, so what you're gonna have is parts coming in, going through that first wash stage, just spraying on each side of the part, rinsing, phosphating, seal coat, dry, and then directly into the paint line. Most of the time, this is a U on your manufacturing floor. So parts are going in and coming out right next to each other. And when they come out, they've already been painted uh, and dry. So what common problems do we see in those monorail systems? Well, the biggest one is flash rusting, right? So before we can get to the iron phosphate, we've got to clean up that surface. Well, now you've got this pristine uh, activated steel or iron surface that's super prone to rust. And rusting isn't a huge problem, except if you've got a dialed in process, then you have to use that phosphating stage to remove the rust that's formed onto these parts instantly. Luckily, there's an easy solution for this, and that's a sodium nitrite rust inhibitor. The sodium nitrite will uh, prevent the flash rusting, but it also has an added benefit in phosphating is it actually catalyzes and speeds up that phosphate reaction. So we really like to use that to prevent this flash rusting and reduce your cycle times. So once you've got a process, how do you know that it's worked? Well, the easiest way to look at this is just the color indicator. This is kind of a litmus test. If you're not gonna paint the parts right after, if you've got some nuts and bolts that you're using for uh, iron phosphate for wear protection or lubrication, uh, you can tell by the color, right? It starts off as a blue, and that's gonna be 10 to 30 milligrams per square foot. You'll move into a gold color, and that 35 to 90 range, and then eventually the coating is gonna go so thick that you're gonna stop reflecting light, and you're gonna get this dull matte gray finish on the part. Now, a lot of people ask us, can I uh, weigh my parts before and after? Uh, you can do that if you have a really thick coating. With small parts and thin coatings, remember, we're removing a little bit of iron off the surface. So it's really hard to measure a small coating by weight. The other thing you can do for paint lines is a scratch test or a crosshatch test. And this is very simple. You're cutting an X into the part here uh, and then removing it with paint, or not paint, but tape to see how much paint comes off. And if you get a lot that's coming off, that's a fail. If it's just an X, then you're looking at a pass. Uh, there's actually a more advanced version of this with a crosshatch tool where you do a 10 by 10 grid and that's uh, the exact same concept, but with the 10 by 10 grid, you have a bit, little bit easier way of quantifying how much came off of the part. You know, you can have zero, five to ten percent, or up to you know 66 percent. So you have a, a better quantitative view of how your process is performing. Lastly, when we talk about that sludge that forms, it's just a necessary evil of the process. Um, because it's a chemical reaction, remember, we're going to form iron phosphate that's going to be in the tank and it's going to deposit at the bottom of your tank as well as on your part. You got three main ways to remove that. 
versus just draining the tanks out and scraping it out. Secondly, you can have an offline tank with filtration that'll filter that out and then pump it back into your wash tank. So you have a you have to clean out that wash tank less often. And lastly, you can do that same thing, but instead of filtration using a, a centrifuge, and that's really effective at removing the iron sludge. So that gives us a pretty good overview. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to William in case there are any questions. Thank you, Jason. If you'd like to discuss this topic further, please contact your local Kaizen representative or send an email to tech, the number two tech at kaizen.com. And we will have one of our cleaning experts schedule a follow up with you as soon as possible. Again, we thank you all for joining us today and we hope to see you again soon. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a great day.